God's Word has the power to change lives. May my life be changed today. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. Open up your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. It is, it is Thanksgiving Sunday. And this is a Thanksgiving message that I hope lasts all year long. Luke chapter 17. The title of the message today is God's Love Language. Ooh, I'm excited about this. Luke 17, beginning at verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Boy, that took some faith, didn't it? Jesus didn't snap his fingers and heal them. He healed them as they went to see the priest. One of them, how many of them? One of them. When he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Heavenly Father, Lord, I believe this message is already anointed because it's your word, but anoint my heart to deliver it, anoint hearts and ears to receive it, and God, may it be transformational in our lives. May our December and January and February and March and April and right on down the line, may those months be different because of what happens right here in the month of November 2018 on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Change our lives forever because of what we're about to receive, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. You may be seated.
Come on, give Him praise, church. Come on, praise Him today. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Praise God, it's Thanksgiving Sunday. No doubt He deserves our Thanksgiving today. Listen to the Word of God. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name. I will give thanks to the Lord because of His righteousness. I will enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. I will give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever and His faithfulness continues through all generations. And whatever you do, whether it be in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through Him. You may be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for mankind. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen to that today? Talks about thanksgiving all throughout the Bible. He deserves our thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. But shouldn't thanksgiving be more than stuffing our face, loosening our pants, and watching football? Shouldn't thanksgiving be more than a a once-a-year pause in our busy schedule? Shouldn't thanksgiving be more than pumpkin pies and turkey? Come on. Thank God I love pumpkin pies and turkey. But thanksgiving should be a lifestyle that is lived out throughout the entire year. Amen? This is vitally important that we get this. Your life will be different if you get this message today. How do we do that? How do we figure out how to live a grateful life? I mean, there's no doubt we know what to be thankful for. That's not an issue. I mean, he died so that we could live. Our sins are forgiven. He's our best friend. He's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. He's coming again for us. He's got a home prepared for us. The question isn't so much what should we be thankful for. The question is how can we best express to God thanksgiving in a way that will be impactful to him? I want to touch the heart of God. God touches my heart all the time. I want to touch the heart of God with my thanksgiving. Amen? See, in order for us to do that today, I'm going to take you on a little journey here. We're going to look at the major premise of a book that many of you have read. It's a book by Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages. How many of you have ever read The Five Love Languages? Okay, Some of you already know what your love language is. Uh, The premise of the book is everybody has at least one love language. And by that, those are ways that someone can show that person love that will be meaningful to them. You can do something for one person, doesn't mean a thing to them, but do something, do the same thing for somebody else, and it has deep meaning for them. Let's review, some of you already know these, but let's review what the five love languages are. Number one, words of affirmation. Those are words that we use to build up one another, to build up the other person, such as, honey, you look beautiful today. Such as, thank you for making sure all the bills get paid Thank you for taking out the garbage. Not, it's about time you took out the garbage. If you didn't take it out, the flies were about to carry it out. That's not the concept of love language, okay? So words of affirmation number two is gifts. A gift simply says that they were thinking about you. It doesn't have to be an expensive gift. It just says they're thinking about me. Number three, acts of service. Doing something you know they would like. Giving your wife a foot rub, cooking their favorite meal, changing the oil in the car, going with your husband to see an adventure shoot 'em up kind of movie, going with your wife to see a chick flick. Acts of service. Number four, quality time. That means giving somebody your undivided attention. That doesn't mean you sit down in your recliner with your dinner while you watch TV in the same room. That doesn't quite count, does it? And then lastly, physical touch, like holding hands and kissing and sexual relationships. And see, if we really understand the love languages, our relationship will be better with those people that we love. 
And if we really understand the love languages and apply them to our relationship with God, God will see and know on a regular basis how much we are grateful to him and how much we thank him for all that he has done in our lives. So here's what I want to do today. I want to ask you the question, what are God's primary love languages? If we've got love languages, I believe God has love languages too. What is it that we can do that will let him know how much we love him, we appreciate him, and how grateful we are to him? How can we use this today to then develop a lifestyle, not a once a year thing, but a lifestyle of gratefulness and thankfulness to God that we use not only on a Thursday in November, but throughout the entire year. That's what we want to do today, is develop a lifestyle of gratefulness and thanksgiving. Somebody say amen out there. Here we go. I'm going to give you some of Jesus' love language, some of God's love languages today. Number one is acts of service. You may want to jot these down as we go along with these. Number one is acts of service. Have you ever gone up to your spouse and, and I mean your heart was just full. You're so in love with them and you take them by the hands and you look deep into their eyes and you utter those three glorious words, I love you. And you get back three other words, talk is cheap. And they say, if you love me, show me you love me. Don't just tell me you love me, show, you, show me that you love me. Meaning, pick up your dirty clothes and things like that. See, let, let, me, let me just help. Somebody, the light bulb's going to come on for you right now, okay? See, you are amazed, and you think the only issue at hand is the fact that you left your underwear laying on the floor in the bathroom. You think that's, that's all that has happened here, but can I tell you something? Your underwear is talking. Some of you, that's all you can remember about this message. Your underwear is talking. It's letting your wife know, well, he doesn't respect me one bit. If he did, he wouldn't leave his junk laying around like that. He'd pick it up. He knows that I don't have time to go pick it up after him all the time. He doesn't care about me at all. He really doesn't love me. My mama was right. I never should have married this guy in the first place. All over underwear laying on the bathroom floor. Come on. <laughs> So acts of service, doing something we know that they would like. So here's the question. I mean, isn't this a little bit tough question? So what can we do for God? Wow. See, it's not like he needs anything, is it? But remember what Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40. I had so many scriptures I wanted to read at the beginning, but we'll interject them throughout the message. Matthew 25, 40, that's, that's where Jesus is talking about when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And in the end of that story, Jesus says this, whatever you did for the least of these, you've done it unto me. Remember that? So here it is, acts of service. When you do something kind for anyone, that is telling God how much you love him and how much you appreciate him. That's pretty cool. That translates over, doesn't it? That means when you take a pumpkin pie to your neighbor, you're showing the Lord how much you appreciate him. When you serve senior citizens tonight, you're showing your appreciation to God. When you take time to pray with someone who's sick, amen. When you serve in the nursery rotation here at church so parents can be in here and, and actually worship God and hear the word of God without, without children tugging at them all the time and you're pouring Jesus into those children in there, that is showing how much you appreciate the Lord. When you buy a gift for a child whose mom or dad is in prison, that is showing God how much you appreciate him and is thanking him. When you call someone who isn't here today because you, wanna, you wonder if they're doing okay, that's showing the love of Christ and that's showing God that you are thankful to him when you take time to take someone to surgery or you help plan a church in a neighboring community because they need to hear about Jesus too or when we hear someone's story and we tell them about Jesus or when you work in children's church and so many more things that we could put on this list but when you commit an act of service to help someone else God is knowing that that is saying how much you appreciate him and how much you love him isn't that amazing? So listen, a, a night like tonight, night to be thankful, a night like Angel Tree, those are not just like cool little things we do. There's a relationship between God and us that is enhanced when we participate in that some way. And so you will be blessed as you participate in that some way. It's all saying, Jesus, I just want to show 
how grateful I am for the difference that you have made in my life. Okay? So when you do something kind for someone else, you are thanking Jesus. Amen. Number two, second love language of our God is quality time. God wants to spend time with you. Isn't that mind-blowing that the God who created everything actually wants to be with you, wants to be with me? That just astounds me time after time. Think about this. God didn't create this world, you know, the beauty of all the creation. He didn't create this world just because he thinks giraffes are cute and he likes mountains. He created this world for one reason, to be with mankind. The Word of God declares that it was God who walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool of the day. He wanted to be close to them. Can you imagine that? I mean, he created it all to be close to man. Can you imagine how it broke God's heart when Adam and Eve sinned and they had to be kicked out of the garden? They were alone, but God missed them. He wanted to be with them. And so from that moment on, when Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, from that moment on, God's plan begun to unfold. He, he knew that it would happen, and he knew that it would take place, but the plan began to unfold, and Jesus came down as a baby in a manger so that God could be with man, and God sent his son to die on the cross so that Calvary's cross could span the difference between heaven and earth, and he tore the veil in the Holy of Holies by the hand of God from top to bottom so that we could come directly and boldly into his very presence and right now he's working on our eternal home so that where he is one day we shall be also God wants to be with us the plan of God is shouting I want to be with my people and if he longs to be with us how much more should we long to be with him amen now here it is I want to get right where we are today Here's the one who died for us. How it must break his heart when you play video games for hour after hour and praying for 10 minutes is too long. I'm being very serious here. Very, I mean, we got to get it together. How it must break his heart when we're so busy working for his kingdom like Martha was and yet we fail to sit at his feet and learn about him like Mary did. How it must devastate God when we can't even pause for a few moments and thank God for the meal that we're about to eat. God wants to be with you. God wants to be with you. Listen to these promises in God's Word. Psalm 37, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Psalm 145, 18 said, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. Acts 17, 27 says, He is not far from each of us. The Word says, When you go out to battle, I'm going to be with you. God says that in my presence there is fullness of joy. To the Israelites in the wilderness, He said, I'm going to go with you. God wants to be with us. God wants to be with you. Don't disappoint Him. Have you ever really had your hopes set high? Maybe, maybe on a Thanksgiving and you knew that a relative that you loved dearly but you didn't get to see but once or twice a year they were going to come to your house and you were, going, you were so excited to make prepper and then at the last moment they bail on you. How disappointing that is. Don't bail out on God. God wants you to be with Him. And He'll know that you love Him because you spend time with Him. Amen? How do children know that mom and dad love them if they're too busy to ever be with them? Let me ask you this question, a little, little side note here. Have you ever, are you one of those people that you've ever wondered why God, how is it that you seem so far away from me? We've probably all been through those moments in our life where we say, God, where are you? Why do you seem so far away from me? And I would refer you to James chapter 4, verse 8, that simply says, draw near to God, and what? He will draw near to you. God never moved. We moved. You draw near to God, and His promise is, I will draw near to you. God wants to be with you. God looks at you being with Him, as a sign that you are thankful and grateful to Him. So we can do that all year long, can't we? Develop that lifestyle of prayer. Amen, amen. Number three today is gifts, another love language. Uh, at, at the first Christmas, the wise men brought gifts, didn't they? 
Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now, we serve the almighty God, the God of this universe, who doesn't need anything. You ever, you ever, you have someone on your Christmas list that's like, what am I going to buy them? They don't really need anything. Wow, how'd you like to try to buy for God? God Almighty doesn't need anything. He doesn't have any use for anything that you could ever possibly order on Amazon.com. Okay? He doesn't require you to purchase an expensive gift and meticulously wrap it and present it to him. It's not that kind of gift he's looking for. See, he's given us all kinds of gifts. He's given us the gift of salvation, the gift of healing, the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and on and on. He's given us so many gifts. But what kind of gift do we give God? Wow. We're not talking about the gifts he gives to us. We're talking about the gifts we can give to him. What does that look like for us? I refer you to a story in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Jesus is standing back. He's observing. He's telling this story later on, but in the story, he's observing. He's by the temple treasury, and people are coming along putting offerings in the temple treasury. Along come these rich people. They are dressed in opulence, and they have people as their attendants, and they're very proud to walk up to that treasury kettle and to get out their bags of coins and open them up, and they probably held them extra high. You know how when you go fishing, if you want your fish to look good, you, when you take a picture, you hold it out real far? It looks bigger that way, you know? Well, here's these, here's these guys going, and they're paying their temple tax, and they're probably lifting that up real high and dropping all the coins in so that when the coins go in the pot, it's like, coin, 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 coin. And everybody looks like, whoo, man, they must be rich. Behind the rich people come this little lady, and she drops two very small copper coins in the kettle. Clink. And Jesus steps up and says, whoa. This lady has given more than everybody else, for they gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, gave everything she had to live on. Jesus took notice of that. And can I equate that to this love language of gifts? God considers it a gift to him every time you sacrifice. Every time you make a sacrifice, that's a gift to God. Giving up some of your time to help someone who needs your help. Wow. Wow. Tithing, when it doesn't make sense in the human way to tithe. Taking an angel off that tree and buying a gift for a boy or girl that has their mom or dad incarcerated when your budget is so tight that it squeaks already. And it's a sacrifice. When you, instead of just sitting in church, you start serving in church, that's a sacrifice. All those ways that you can make a sacrifice to the Lord. See, we think we're off the hook because we know that, hey, Jesus was a supreme sacrifice and we don't have to kill goats and, 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 and bulls and doves anymore. We don't have to go through that process. But God is still looking for sacrifice from his people. Don't make, don't make that mistake of believing you're off the hook. God is looking for his people today to be sacrificial. That's not how we get saved. We don't sacrifice in order to gain the favor of God. We sacrifice because we have the favor of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So what are you sacrificing for the Lord? I, I ask you that deep, profound question. Think about it. What are you specifically sacrificing for the Lord? If you're not sacrificing, now I guarantee you there are people in this place who I could give you an hour to think of that and you won't be able to come up with one way you're sacrificing. Well, you need to find a way and start sacrificing to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We go on to the last one today and it's words of affirmation. Now, let me say, this is only number four, and obviously there are five love languages. The fifth lo love language is physical touch. Hey, Jesus is not here in the flesh right now. One day we shall be with him, and then, then we'll see what happens there. But for right now, we're leaving the fifth one off. But we go to the fourth one, words of affirmation. And the story is told that we read today in Luke chapter 17 about an encounter that Jesus had with ten lepers. I want you to, I want you to get... You, Put yourself in this scene, okay? Don't just read it. Don't just hear it. Put yourself in this scene. Here's these lepers, and their life is miserable. You know, the, the Old Testament law says they've got to stay so far away from everybody else, and there was no medical way for them to get any solid kind of help back then. And they, were, they, they knew other people who were lepers who lost fingers and legs and feet, and they were on their way to doing that. And the ten lepers hung around because that's what lepers did. They didn't have any other friends. Their family couldn't be with them. So they hung together as lepers, and there's ten lepers. And one day they see Jesus coming. I don't know how well they knew him, but I guarantee you they knew about him. 
life. They saw Jesus coming, and they begin to cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They're thinking this is our only hope. We have no hope in the world, but wait a minute, Jesus is right here. And guess what? Jesus did have mercy upon them. He said, I want you to go and show yourself to the priest. And the word of God says, as they were going to show themselves to the priest. Can you imagine? They're on their way to see the priest. And they look over and say, hey, your, your skin's looking better. Hey, look, my finger just grew back. Hey, look, and on their way, they're being healed by the power of God. And they get to the priest. And the priest's eyes start bugging out because he's seen these guys before. But it seems like they're not even the same guys because now they're healed. And the only possible way they could be healed was by the power of God. And he says, I declare you clean. I declare you whole. I declare you healed. And they were so excited. They're dancing up and down all over the place. And some of them go running undoubtedly back to their families who can't believe they're healed. But this one guy, a Samaritan, goes running to Jesus. And he falls at his feet. And I don't think he says, Jesus, thank you. for." No, he says, Jesus, I'm healed. I'm restored. I'm whole today because of you. Thank you for doing that. I love you, Jesus. Whoa. Jesus said, weren't there ten? Where are the other nine? Friend, he loves it when you speak words of affirmation to him. Praise and worship time. Can, let me just share my heart as your pastor. I believe the church of Jesus Christ, and yes, Emmanuel as well, not just, not just this church, the whole church, but we too, we need to get better at praising Him. Can I tell you, out of all the love languages, this is the easiest one. You know, the other ones are acts of service and quality time and gifts of sacrifice. Praising Him with your mouth and your heart, that's the easiest thing. And I believe that when we begin to worship Him, when we begin to praise Him, we ought to explode in praise to God. You have so much to be thankful for. We could take the next two hours, and one after one of each and every one of you could say, listen, I'm so glad Jesus delivered me from drugs. I'm so glad that I'm healed. I used to be in bed all the time with so much pain, but I'm healed. I thank God that God dealt with my daughter and brought her back to Jesus. I thank God that he restored my marriage. I thank God that he did this, and I thank God that he did that. There are multiple stories inside of every one of us, every one of us about things that we have in our lives in order to be grateful to our God. And so it should be very easy. It should come very easily for us to praise Him, for us to open up our mouths and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here today. I want to challenge you. Right down the road is the Islamic Center of Cleveland, the mosque. Those Muslims pray to their God Five times a day. I challenge you. Can you not praise your God at least five times a day? I'm not saying you got to spread out a prayer rug and get down on your knees. I'm saying as you're driving to work, just spend a little bit of time saying, Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for providing for all of our needs. Before you go to bed at night, praise him for something. When you get up in the morning, I don't care if you're not a morning person, you should praise him. Praise and may, may some of the first words out of your lips be praise to your God. I challenge every one of us in this place who names the name of Jesus, I challenge you today to spend at least five different occasions every day of your life giving praise to him. Now, once again, this is not salvation by works. I'm not saying you have to do this to get saved. I'm saying we do this because he has saved us, because he loved us enough to send his son to die on Calvary's cross. Jesus died for you. Can't you live for him? Can't you praise his name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here's what we're, here's what we're going to do right now. In just a minute, the worship team is going to be leading us. And I want you to sing. I want you to praise him. And there will come a time during this song where I'm going to just turn around and go, whoosh, and that means everybody stops instantly. Singers, instrumentalists, everybody stops. But you don't stop. You keep on praising him, and we're going to praise him out loud. Some of you are like, oh, I've never praised God out loud. Try it. You'll like it, okay?